Hello everybody, I'm Garrett and these are reviews from Mob.org. Let's go. Ride or die. Today we will speak about a game dedicated to the hefty bald man who kicks asses right and left. That's Vin Diesel. And the game itself is based on the film that can barely do without the guy. Unfortunately, it's not the Chronicles of Riddick. Meet Fast and the Furious 6, the game. First there was the game, Iron Man 3. And now, Fast and the Furious 6. I clearly understand that the games are made on the basis of certain films, but my worthless mind, constrained by convention, cannot accept the fact that the second, or the third game, in the Fast and the Furious series is called Fast and Furious 6. Hey Logix, where are you? But on the whole, it makes no difference. The game was released by Kabam. The game tells us about the hard fate of a street racer. Well, you know, wheels, chicks, and other hopelessness. All the six parts of the film tell us that street racers are a kind of separate community who cannot live without nitrogen injection, cool wheels, risk, and fast driving. And all the mugs are hopeless romantics and are right and good people at heart, but they were drawn into bad things by their fate. Now, I'll try to tell you about the plot a little, but without spoilers, if it's possible. Since Dominique and Brian have caused mischief in Rio and gotten a lot of money, they scattered all around the world and had to lie low in hiding. But it's quite inconvenient for such big, in any sense of the word, people. Meanwhile, the dashing agent Luke Hobbs hunts for a gang of other four-wheeled assholes, and he surely needs the help of our tough guys. In return, he offers them a kind of indulgence, an absolution. And after that, well, watch, play, and you will see everything yourself. If you saw my review for Need for Speed, you must remember my attitude towards races. I'm fed up with them recently. They lack newness, and it becomes even more difficult to distinguish between this game and that. Well, on starting the game, I expected to see a usual hackneyed racing game. Nothing of the kind! The gameplay itself pleased me awfully. Here it distinguishes itself from the worn out, in every sense of the word, genre canons. And it's nothing but good! Naturally, in the main menu you can see a map where you can choose a track. The laps become one of three kinds here. Let's talk a little bit about each of them in turn. Drift. Obviously, you have to drift. Does it make sense? Yeah, yes it does. The controls are non-standard though. To my mind, it's done in a much more interesting way than other racing games I've seen. The turns you enter are highlighted, and the control itself is handled by means of buttons on the screen you have to press in time. The second type is a drag race. Here you drive along the straight line opposing the horses under your hood to the horses of your contender. Here you have to shift gears and avoid obstacles in time by means of quick time events. And the third, these are combined tracks. You'll have to drift as well as drive along the straight lines there. And I have never thought that I would say that about this arcade racing game. This is unbelievable. The graphics are at their best here. Spectacularity goes beyond the limit. The camera constantly changes its angle and sometimes you feel like you are watching a movie. It's all about quick time events. Obviously, the game is rather scripted at that rate and it is quite difficult to estimate the real physics, damages and other things, but on the other hand, you seem to watch a beautiful video clip, and on the whole, everything is optimized and doesn't lag. Okay, we had a ride and it's time to go to the garage. There you will see that many details were made carefully and with love. There are tons of cars available, and all of them are rather cool. Their models are as well as the game graphics, are made perfectly and for the full do. In the garage, you will have an opportunity to buy new cars, put new details to those you already have, and recolor them to your liking. You can also make aero graphics, and in general, make the design of your vehicle unique and full of eye candy. <sighs> and right there is a huge fly in the ointment from the dark depths that cancels out absolutely all the advantages of the game. Try and guess what it is. I'll give you a hint. The game is free. Have you guessed? Yup, you are right. It's Donation. Our old friend Donation. And it's not a simple donation, it is a fucking huge donation. As I was told, the game was thoroughly copied from a brainchild of EA Games, which also had such problems. I don't know about that game. But the only thing you can make here without donation is to recolor the car body and buy the scant goodies and small details that don't help you much on the track. The game enrages not even with the fact that it constantly begs you for money. It enrages with the fact that it might have been very good. It had all the preconditions to be. And if it was made into a paid game, goddammit, I wouldn't grudge money for it. But I beg your pardon now. I've never liked beggars. 
I can see no sense in speaking about pros and cons of the game. The only con completely exceeded all the pros and completely destroyed the fun of the game and turned a rather cool product into an annoying poor slap in the face to all the lovers of races, quick time events, and Vin Diesel. But if you have some spare money, you can download the game and test it. It's available for iOS as well as for Android. I'm going to go delete it right now and slit my wrists. That's all for today. Subscribe to the channel, like it, and share the video with your friends. I promise that you won't have to donate to do it. This was Garrett and Reviews from Mob.org. See you soon. And remember, Vin Diesel is cool.